guests and our visitors. We're so glad that you could join us tonight. We begin uh, this worship service singing and then by lighting the Advent candles and tonight the Christmas candles. We light this candle. It seems a simple thing, lighting a candle, a quiet thing that I do alone, to provide something bright in the midst of all my darkness. But it doesn't make that much difference. It doesn't change the power of the night to bring doubt and fear and separation. It doesn't make the world a better place, lighting a candle, does it? We light these candles because we have seen the light and we believe increasing the light does make a difference in the world around us. We light these candles because we want to be the people of the light, who know a God who loved the world so much. This God chose to be born in a manger in the midst of the darkness. But we light these candles as a sign of the light of the world that is coming into our darkness, and we sing with joy. We light the candles of peace, hope, joy, and trust as our circle is complete. And we light the light of love as the sign of Christ's presence among us, no matter how dark it may seem. The people who have walked in darkness have seen great light. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth let there be love. Mm. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. 
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Canarius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
Aren't there any of this from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 12? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger.
tonight's fourth lesson from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his faith rests. Please stand with us for our next carol. Christmas Eve and the anticipation of the children, God. 
Let us have that new and fresh, no matter how old we are. Make this year special to us. Teach us something new, show us something delightful. God, allow us to be open to the gifts you give. God, we thank you for all that you have given us, um, that you provided for us so richly. And we ask that you would receive our offering, God, as our way of saying thank you to you for what you've done tonight, this week, today, this year, God, for all that you've done in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a moment for a reflection before the offering is collected. I didn't know if I was going to do a meditation this year. I kind of let the Holy Spirit move. And so some years I do and some I don't. I was reading through the scripture lessons this morning. And I want to share with you what popped into my mind and heart. If I were to say the name Arphalos to you, would you recognize that? Um, what about Caiaphas? I some of you. Okay. Quick Quirinius? Maybe. Herod? Pilate? These are the names of the most powerful people who lived in Jesus' time, according to everybody who lived in that part of the world. If you had said, who has the power to make my life better in an instant, they would have named one of these men. If you had said, who has the power to take everything away from me, they would have named one of these men. These were the most powerful, influential figures of their time, the governor, the chief priest, all during Jesus' life. The only reason we know their names today is not because they were powerful men who did great things in their time, but because they are characters in the background of the greatest story that God has ever told. They are characters in the background of the life of Jesus. We heard Calvin ably read, once his mic worked, you were so great, that's my son. So I'm especially sorry that that happened to him. The name Quirinius, the governor of Syria, we wouldn't even know it. Except that to a humble family of no particular fame and fortune, a son was born. These important men were only important, are only important to history because they were near Jesus. This is an encouraging word for me today, tonight, because it brings a special importance to the ordinary lives that we live. And it puts in its appropriate place those powerful names and figures in our own modern time. Those senators, those representatives, those governors, those presidents, those prime ministers, who seem to be able to make someone's life wonderful with a snap of their fingers and destroy it in a tweet. It takes away the power of those figures because we realize that they are only relevant to human history. But when God writes the history books, the names that will be written there are the names that have done the work of Jesus. Each one of you are among those people. You may feel ordinary, not especially noticed, but if you do the work of God, you are a part of the greatest story that has ever been written. Merry Christmas. <clears throat>
the, uh, the fifth lesson of this evening is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and verse 9 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Thank you. 
we have a tradition on Christmas Eve at Alders Gate of um, forming a circle around the outside of the sanctuary, taking our candles with us and sharing the light on the first candle, which is going out. So we're going to figure that out really quick. Yes, and Sarah will do the reading after we get into the circle. So um, why don't you all grab your candles, your song sheet, and... Um,
This is the greatest joy the world has ever known, and so we will sing joy to the world together after we get the lights back on, and the children are invited right forward to the front so they can sing together. Where's the kids? Just four? 